Hey guys, Icy Cat here. Today we've got some interesting information. We had a reveal of some of the buffs and nerfs that we can expect to see rolling out with the next patch, as well as information from the developer AMA that was held on Reddit, giving us some ideas for changes that are coming up next that haven't yet officially been announced. Want to know more? We'll talk about it all next. First up, and we knew this was coming, we're getting the changes to Lion. They wanted to address the fact that he has a pretty much 100% pick rate in Pro League, and that his ability is kind of game-breaking at this point. So he's going to get a few changes, the first of which is that his scan outline is going to be affected. Previously, if you were detected, it didn't matter if you stopped moving, your outline would remain, and they are changing that. So now if you get caught when it's initially starting, as long as you stop moving, it will go away. You will not be detected anymore. Now again, Lion Scan doesn't last a real long time, so the damage may already be done by that point, but at least you have a chance of somebody maybe losing sight of you before they get a fix. You can still do all the things you used to be able to do in that case. You can still rotate or you can change your stance and people may not know that. So even if they saw you standing there, if you stop moving and then drop prone, even if they try to pre-fire your position through a wall, you're not going to get hit if you've changed your stance because that is information they still will not be aware of. This is something that they're going to be monitoring and they're not necessarily going to stop here. This is just what they're doing for now. In addition to that, they are also going to be revising the way his cooldown structure works. So previously you could do this every 10 seconds. Now you have a 20 second cooldown between uses. In addition to that, they want to make sure that people are being more careful when they use a scan. So instead of having the three scans, he will now be reduced to only having two scans. Next up, we're going to take a look at some changes that wind up impacting Jaeger. So his ADS units, or magpies as they call them, will no longer destroy Hibana's ex Kairos pellets. The reason for this is that when you would shoot Hibana's pellets in there, there's actually six of them clustered together. And if set properly, one charge could actually take out all three of Jaeger's ADS units at once, and with that one interaction, you would render all of Jaeger's gadgets ineffective. Now Jaeger's ADS units will not respond to those pellets. This is both a good thing and a bad thing. It can no longer stop those pellets, but it will also prevent one of Hibana's charges from basically taking them all out, so it's sort of a pro-con thing. They also think that this will contribute to lowering Hibana's pick rate just a little bit because it's reducing her utility to kind of take out all of those ADS units at once. Then we've got some changes coming to Blitz. Lately, they've been doing a lot of things to shake him up, making him now a two-speed operator, but now they're finding that that's making him more frustrating to play against. Rather than reverting him back to how he used to be, they're instead going to make some other changes to kind of tweak him and still keep that speed and lethality that he got. So what they're doing is they're now reducing the flash range from 8 meters down to 5 meters. He will also have fewer flash charges, going from 5 to 4 charges. They felt that the recent changes they did to him brought him closer to the pick rate where they wanted him to be, but they felt that his overall win rate was becoming too high even though his pick rate had increased. They think that, you know, taking care of the flash charge, nerfing that a little bit might be a way to bring that in. Interestingly, they say they are also looking into extra ways to give defenders more options to counter him at melee range, but that will take more time, which is an interesting statement in and of itself, because if you have ways that you can counter Blitz at a closer range, if it's any kind of a melee engagement, you're going to probably be doing something that can carry over to other shield operators too, like Monty or Fuse if he's using a shield, or Recruit Shield, things like that. This may actually be some kind of a new mechanic that we'll be getting down the road that might change up the way that the melee interactions with shield characters work. Of course, right now, if you do strike the shield with the melee, they get in that stun animation for just a second and unless they turn and rotate 90 degrees to kind of counter where the shield placement is now moved to you can then get a vulnerable strike on them so it sounds like they might be looking at changing the way that works down the road the next operator getting a change is going to be Vigil. So they saw that initially Ella was really overpowered. She's getting picked all the time, and she was kind of dominating the defensive, kind of aggressive roaming techniques. And then they nerfed her a couple of times, and they brought her down to a point where then she got a pick rate placement where they wanted her to be. But then Vigil sort of took over as like the next reigning champ of that position. So now they want to bring him down a little bit more. And the ways that they're looking at doing that is to reduce the effectiveness of his cloak. So previously, its charge lasted for 30 seconds and they are now reducing it to a 12 second charge before he gets uncloaked. 
to kind of make up for that a little bit though they are now reducing the time it takes for his cloak to refill in half it used to take 12 seconds for his cooldown to expire between uses now it will only take six seconds so they're chopping the amount of time that it lasts more than in half but they are also reducing that cooldown by a half so it's sort of trying to balance it out a little bit Basically, if you want about the same amount of coverage, it's going to be a little less than it was before, but if you want about the same amount of coverage, you're going to have to be spamming the ability more frequently with cooldown pauses in between. The next operator seeing some changes is going to be Hibana, and she is going to lose her Claymore and instead receive a Breaching Charge. And the reason they're doing this is her pick rate is insanely high right now, and they wanted to take a look at how to rework this operator without changing her core ability, and they didn't yet want to get into changing the mechanics on her gun. So they felt that the next best thing that they could do was go ahead and change out her kit for secondary gadgets. They say according to what they've looked at, the attacker's breaching charge winds up having the least amount of use and impact in terms of gameplay. It's not that it doesn't, but as compared to other things like claymores or flashbangs, it winds up kind of having a lower overall impact. Of course, tell that to any anchor operator whose ceiling you've blown up from above his head by using one of these things but they feel that this kind of change will make her kit a little bit more in line with where it will be by reducing her overall effectiveness in other areas and refocusing them in new ways. We'll have to see if that pans out the way they intended to or not. Now that Claymore is being reassigned, it is now going to Ying, who loses out on the smoke grenades. Another big change that's going to impact Ying as well as other players is going to be that LMGs are getting an overall damage increase and rework. They feel like they're too weak right now as compared to their slower rate of fire, and they may be looking at revising some of the recoil that goes along with that to compensate. That will really take effect when the new recoil system rolls out. That's something that they've prototyped a few times on the technical test server, but they haven't actually implemented into the game yet. They're kind of worried about things like macros being assigned to hardware that would predict the recoil pattern because it's a known profile per weapon. And so they're trying to figure out some kind of different ways to work the recoil system so that that can't be abused and taken advantage of. We don't know when that's going to roll out, but when it does, it seems like the new recoil patterns will take effect for the LMGs, and they're kind of waiting to tamper with the recoil until that system rolls out. As you can see by some of the images, you get kind of a concept of what it is they're doing. The damage is really going up on most of the LMGs. Some of them are staying pretty close to where they were. Others are getting a pretty significant increase, and that's just based on the fact that some of them were kind of already higher to begin with, whereas some were just unnecessarily lower than they needed to be and were really brought up to parity with the other ones. Another thing you'll notice here is on the side, it will say heavy barrel, and that immediately might cause some people to get freaked out thinking that is a new category of attachment. And this was asked in the developer AMA, which we will be getting into some of the things that were revealed in that in just a few minutes here. But the development team did say that no, heavy barrel is actually the extended barrel attachment. It's not like a different attachment just for LMGs or anything like that. Initially, when extended barrels were rolled out, they had been called heavy barrels at that time. They wound up changing it as they were implementing it into the game, but there were still some files there that wound up getting stuck as being called heavy barrels. Eventually, that was taken care of and replaced, and so if you've joined the game after that date, you wouldn't necessarily have known that. And the developers confirmed that, yes, this is an internal naming thing. They were just calling them the heavy barrels again because that's what they call them internally, but it is actually what we all know as extended barrels. These are not new attachment categories. So that was confirmed by the development team. Going back to operators now, we're going to take a look at Finca, and they feel that her win rate is just too high right now. They're not going to really make any big changes at this point in time. They want to kind of study it more and see what is causing it, what they can do about it, where they should go from here. They also know that some of the recoil change that she introduces to the game may be hard to sort of gauge how it's impacting things because they're going to be changing that recoil system, like I said before, and it may be better to kind of wait for that new recoil system to get into play before they change the way she affects recoil. So they're aware that Finca is maybe not where they want her to be at this point. They're watching it. They're going to change it, but right now they're not going to really do too much yet. They do make a brief note on Ella, and they say that she's in a place right now where they like her. Her pick rate is where they want it to be. They feel like they've compensated for the way her gun had that high magazine capacity by making that recoil much more significant and just sort of balancing where she is with the amount of mines she has and how effective they were. And they don't really see the need to change her anymore. And then they close out the developer blog by saying that there is just some things regarding the way that operators are balanced. And the biggest part of this is that they're going to keep trying to make each operator a viable choice, but they recognize that, you know, you can't always do this, 
without affecting the player's enjoyment of the game. Sometimes you can take changes too far or sometimes not far enough. And so they're just kind of basically saying like, bear with us guys. We know that there's a lot of tweaks that need to be made in the game, but it's all a balancing act. Now, the last thing that they mentioned in the developer blog will actually tie into the first thing that we talk about in the developer AMA here. And uh, I'll kind of show how that reveals here in a second. But what they say here is that they acknowledge that the current meta of the game the feedback they're getting is that it just feels faster than it has in the past. And keep in mind, that's with doing things like introducing more trap operators like Legion or some of these other people, you know, making the cap can traps, increasing them, but not having them do more damage, you know, making it so that there's more things that should be slowing people down. And it's still not doing that. They do say that they expect that the nerf to line will have an impact on how the meta feels and the length of the rounds. So how does this play into the developer AMA that was hosted later on on Reddit? Well, first of all, let me start by saying I'm not going to go over every single thing that was announced in there, but there are two, I feel, very significant things that were revealed at that point. They did answer a lot of questions and, you know, kind of talked about some generalities of things. But here they were talking about the way that the game just feels faster to players, and they're trying to figure out what they can do about that. Well, in the developer AMA, one of the questions that was asked and voted up to the top for the developers to respond to was this question. It asked, are there any plans to balance or change speed and armor? Currently, it seems that three speed is far superior to three armor. The developer cryptically answers, keep an eye on the next test server, which is really interesting. Then another developer chimes in and says, yes, we agree. We are looking for ways to make both three speeds less dominant and one speeds more viable. Now take that into consideration with what was just put at the end of the previous developer blog there that I was reading, and you get a picture of how they're aware that the game is fast. These three speed operators are zipping all over the place. I mean, there's the universal meme that Ash has no hitbox. And when you take a look at the overall operator win rate, you see that Ash is way over here. She's an overpowered, consistently winning attacker. But what makes her overpowered? Is her gadget overpowered? Not necessarily. It's pretty basic in its use. In fact, I would argue that many Ash operators barely even use the gadget. Maybe they'll do it as part of their first initial rush just to get into the building real quick, but it's not the gadget itself that's overpowered. So is it her weapons? Are those overpowered? Mm, maybe a little bit. The R4C and the G36 are both pretty solid assault rifles, and she's deadly accurate with them there could be some tweaking to be done with her guns. That's definitely a possibility. But I think what we're seeing here is just that everybody knows Ash is fast. She is hard to hit. You combine that speed with those very effective weapons. And again, her breaching charges do have some versatility that allows her to being able to get inside of the buildings quickly if she launches that from a distance and runs in right behind that explosive. She can get in quickly, but she's not necessarily getting kills with that gadget. No, what makes Ash so difficult to come up against is that she is just very fast and very aggressive players tend to gravitate toward her. She's not the only one. You can make a case for other three speed operators, too. I mean, there's a lot of Jaeger mains and things like that. But again, it's the speed of the operator. You can get into position, you can strike quickly and you can move out. And they're aware that there's some things going on with movement in the game that need to be addressed. Here they're talking about speed. Just last month, they were talking about how drop shotting was actually being tested in the technical test server. And players would be ADSing and they would drop shot. It would actually take them out of ADS before putting them back into it once the change stance animation was complete. So it would kind of have an interrupted flow if you were trying to drop shot while you were doing it. So they were looking at ways to adjust that. And now they're saying they're getting feedback that the game feels faster. We're not exactly sure what they mean when they say looking at ways to make three speeds less dominant and one speeds more viable. Does that mean they may actually slow those three speeds down a little bit? Maybe what is three speed now will actually be like a 2.5 speed instead. Or maybe the three speeds will become two speeds and two speeds will be like one and a half speeds. I mean, we don't really know. Now, how do you make a one speed more viable? Does that mean you speed them up? Or does that mean that you actually increase the effectiveness of the fact that they have that three armor? Maybe they can take a little bit more hits than they can before. In fact, that might be how you balance out the three speed characters is by saying maybe you don't adjust their speed, but maybe they simply take more damage since they have less armor. But maybe now they're going to change it so they take even more damage because they have that less armor to sort of balance it out a little bit more. We'll have to wait and see, but it sounds like we're going to be finding out soon.
Now, how do we know we're finding out soon? Well, the next piece of information from the AMA gives us that. Knobs89 asks if there's any plans to add more secondary gadget or weapon attachments to the game. And the developer replies, check the test server patch notes tomorrow. So first of all, that's an answer to this guy's question. Are there more secondary gadgets or weapon attachments coming to the game? And he says, check the patch notes tomorrow with a little winking smiley face there, which means there's something that's going to be in there, some kind of new attachment or some kind of new secondary gadget. They didn't elaborate, but, but something like that is going to be showing up and we're going to be finding out what that might be tomorrow. And again, that is not that heavy barrel that was mentioned in the LMG section. There was a different part of the Reddit AMA where the developers said, no, the heavy barrel is the extended barrel. That was our fault for putting it in the infographic incorrectly. So that is not the new attachment category that might be present tomorrow. And again, it could actually not be an attachment category. It could be a new secondary gadget. We're going to have to wait and see. But we're going to find out that information tomorrow. And as soon as we do, I will be bringing it to you. The other thing this tells us is that we will be getting a test server session very soon. How soon? Well, if they're giving this to us on a Tuesday, typically we'll see that test server session go live maybe on you know Wednesday or Thursday. So by the end of this week, we may be having ourselves a new test server session with a lot of these new changes that we can try out for ourselves. So there you go. That's a lot of the big breakdowns of information that we got to find out about today and some changes that are going to be coming up with this next patch, as well as some things we can be looking forward to with the test server. So what do you guys think? Are these the kinds of changes, the buffs and nerfs that we needed to see in the game? Or are the developers still not getting it and things are going in a different direction than where you'd like to see it? Let me know down in the comments below or share with me over at IcyCat25 on either Facebook or Twitter. Now, if you haven't already, please do like and subscribe. Make sure you click that notification icon so you're alerted as soon as I make new content available. Thanks a lot for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time.